So I actually got some tables and figures in here um, with some data and I'm just not going to go through those, but I uploaded this presentation and made very detailed notes um, about all of the figures, but since I don't have time to kind of walk through them, I'm just gonna just move through them, so. Um, but before we got started today, I just kind of wanted to provide a context of why we all came together and the problem um, that we're trying to solve. So, the United States is a very diverse country, and when I'm talking about diversity, I'm not just talking about ethnic um, and racial diversity, I'm also talking about all of us as individuals and the um, perspectives that we can bring to these discussions based on our life experiences. Um, but as you all know, and again, I'm not going to go through all the, all the um, numbers here, um, but STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, I'll be using um, that acronym um, a good bit, but um, we're basically seeing that um, individuals in STEM occupations are not representative of the U.S. population. And the demographics of the U U.S. population are changing pretty drastically. And so that's something that we need to um, really think about. Um, this is just a figure showing that women get paid <laughs> a lot less um, than men in these occupations, um, between 20, 30 percent less. Um, if you control for that, that kind of goes down a little bit. Um, if you control for education, employment, and some other demographics, that goes down about five, five to 10 percent less. Um, but still something we all want to think about when we have our conversations this week. And the Pew Research Center um, asked the um, U.S. adults what they thought were the reasons why we didn't have more um, minorities and women in um, STEM occupations. And again, I don't have time to go through all of these, but I did want to point out that one that was brought up in, um, for women and um, was not brought up for minority groups. One that was brought up for minority groups was not brought up for women. But you'll see um, more difficult to balance work, family, and STEM jobs that 33% um, said that. And then you hear that a lot with women um, having children and being able to balance that as they, um, you know, go through these types of careers, especially if you're trying to receive tenure and things like that. It can be very challenging. But another one that I w really wanted to point out for um, minorities was the top one, 42% felt um, less likely to have access to quality education to prepare them for STEM fields. And there's actual data um, that show um, show this, that schools with high black and Latino enrollment have less, less access um, to some math and um, high level science courses than low black um, and native enrollment um, schools. And so the NSF includes conference, which is the, um, who's funding this conference, and the reason that they were um, kind of um, um, developed was to try to start ad addressing these issues, realizing that it's going to require collective action across um, a lot of different organizations with a lot of different expertise. Um, and that successful initiatives, things that we have shown to be working, how do we get those scaled? So how do we get other groups adopting those um, practices and being able to utilize them um, in their programs? And then we're also, um, have not had very much success at determining whether or not all of these efforts have really been able to move the needle. So how do we start determining whether we are being able to do that through all of this work that we're doing? Um, and then I wanted to touch just briefly on, because we're looking here in this conference at the intersection of data science and environmental science. Um, I know Carolyn's going to be speaking a lot about the environmental sciences lately, and since I have a short amount of time, I'm going to skip through <laughs> a couple of these slides. But I did want to say um, that the Ecological Society of America, which is the largest, largest ecological um, professional society in the world, um, they have been doing a lot of um, work in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, 
But they did a, a, a study in 2006 and found that only 26% of their membership identified as female, and that although ha they have been trying to do all these efforts, uh, minority membership has only increased slightly, so from 6.3% in 1999 to 8.8% .8 in 2005. And this table that's here um, is basically showing similar data to what I showed for um, across STEM fields. Um, that we have um, a lot less representation from minorities in that um, organization. So now moving on into data science. Um, I know this may be something that comes up a lot of like, what do we mean by data science? Um, and <laughs> there are a lot of many definitions I know out there, um, but for the purposes of this conference, we're kind of trying to um, use a broad definition um, for it to just be the extraction of knowledge from data. And data science is a rapidly growing field. Um, it's one of the focuses right now of the National Science Foundation. In their strategic plan, um, they've talked about developing ways to implement mechanisms to support the training and workforce development of data scientists. And I know we're going to be talking about that a lot this week. But we're also seeing research coming out that we're going to need a lot more data scientists, and there just are not enough um, students entering the field. There's also this question of this data divide that separates individuals, communities, and also institutions. So thinking about individuals, who has the skills to make sense of all these data that are currently available? Who has the ability to make decisions and drive policies with those data? And then thinking about communities, who is collecting the data on these communities and how are those data being used? And who has access to those data after they're being collected? And do those communities that have data data being collected, do they have access to that data that's been collected? And then specifically looking at institutions, um, research universities um, have been developing comprehensive data science programs um, for many years, but Tableau did a study in 2006 and found that most of the larger national universities offer formal analytics programs, but when they looked at um, two-year institutions, they found that only 2% of them had those programs and that that was due to a lack of qualified instructors. So we're also seeing that some of these institutions are la lacking the necessary capacity and resources Sources, um, to develop some of these programs. And then um, there's been some discussion too about what is the role of open data and open science in, in all of this. Um, the Obama administration um, proposed an American graduation initiative, and then they were highlighting that open online education may be a way um, to uh, improve recruitment and retention of minority students in STEM. But a study that was done last year um, by GitHub, um, which is an open source coding platform, 95% um, of its users were male. <laughs> Um, and then only 16% of those users that were surveyed identified as minorities. Um, so we're really seeing that the open, open data, open science is really not moving that needle um, to continue to kind of use that term or phrase. Another I, thinking about the democratization of science, so I, open science is becoming more popular. We have more open science publications like Plus One, open access data like it's being provided by the National Ecological Observatory Network. And then there's also been a huge rise in citizen science. Citizen science actually has a professional society now, the Citizen Science Association, that's been developed to try to support researchers and practitioners because the field is growing so rapidly. And um, there's another study that came out that basically talked about two challenges that they thought need to be examined to start addressing this issue. And one was the lack of individuals from these group attaining skills um, for these careers, and then a lack of an organizational and professional culture that retains and advances um, individuals from these groups. And I know that some people may not feel that these are the major challenges. You may want to add to these challenges, and again, that's going to be a lot of the part of the conversation that we have this week as well. Um, this is just an image of um, kind of showing the differences in what we're meaning by equality and equity. Um, so the three people on the left, they were all given a box so that they could see the, f um, see the baseball game. 
However, um, there's someone um, that's a little shorter, so even though they have the same box as everyone else, they can't see over the fence. But when we're thinking about equity, we need to make sure that it's not just about giving everyone a box, it's all about making sure everyone can see over the fence. Um, there's been a report that came out, um, Keeping Data Science Broad, um, that, that um, recently came out. And um, I just wanted to let you know that there has been some work being done in this field, and we've been trying to upload and provide these reports on the Edson website so that you guys can all look at these and have access to them. And we encourage everyone to continue op uploading those resources so that we can all share those with each other. Um, so the Environmental Data Science Inclusion Network was um, started to try to start addressing some of these issues. Um, although we have everyone here in the room, this is an open network. We're inviting anyone that would like to join to please join us. Um, you can go to our website, edsin.qubeshub.org or edson.cubeshub.org um, to sign, um, sign on to the network, and we would love to have you, especially those that are, are participating remotely um, and I finally wanted to end what we're hoping to achieve through the conference this week specifically we want to increase awareness of all the different initiatives and resources that are available to everyone um, we want all of you to identify collaboration opportunities that you can take home with you um, we want to think about developing shared goals for this network we don't want this to end after this conference so what are we going to try to work towards after it's over um, we want to think about how can we can continue to develop and um, expand this and again thinking about how we move the needle what sort of data should we be collecting to demonstrate that what we're doing is effective um, and we're also wanting to prioritize um, activities and um, new initiatives again hoping that's all going to come out of these conversations this week so you guys have heard way too much from me already but again I was just wanting to provide you with a little bit of context text and these slides and detailed notes um, if you want to look at some of those statistics are all available.